The WGHT Morning Show with Jimmy Howes and Grandma Lasona. Eight oh nine. Wednesday morning, North Jersey, 1500 WGHT. It's your morning show. And joining us, the North Jersey guy himself, Lou Paolo, from the Les Paul Trio. He's here to say hi and talk about a new CD that you will want. It's called Thank You, Les. And here's Lou Paolo now on WGHT. Thanks for joining the show. Hello there, Lou. How are you? All right. Now... On, uh, on that song that we just heard, that's Saul Hudson playing, isn't it? That's right. That's Saul Hudson, who everybody knows as Slash. <laughs> From Guns N' Roses. <laughs> you know his name, Saul Hudson, yeah, correct. Saul Hudson. Lou, how are you, sir? I, uh, I was looking at your website, which is, like, really nice. Mm. I, had, I had no idea. That, what a killer website. Lou uh, Paolo? Thank you. Yes? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, from the Les Paul Trio, you have a new CD out called Thank You, Les. And it's a tribute to Les Paul, who passed away in 2009, who you had the pleasure of playing with for so many, many years. And we'll get to that in a second. First, about you, Lou. Where are you right now as I'm talking to you? Right now, I'm in Haskell, New Jersey. Born in Halden, Lou became interested in playing guitar as a young kid after listening to his father and uncles make music under the grapevine at an Italian family gathering. Started your first band at the age of 16, played weddings, banquets, and parties, then the Air Force, and then boom, you're out there and you're playing music. What did you hear that made you want to play the guitar? Well, I guess the first thing that uh, uh, I was attracted to was Les Paul and Mary Ford, Tony Matola. if anyone <laughs> ever heard of Tony Matola. Do you remember what your first guitar was? Was it, a, what, was it something from like a rummage sale, or did you save up? <laughs> rummage sale, it sounds about what, what you would say. Uh, my father bought me an Epiphone, uh, an Epiphone guitar, which was uh, similar to a Gibson guitar, and it was uh, uh, it's called the Blackstone, and I still have it today. Really? You still have the very first guitar? You, what, year, what year guitar is that? It's a 47, 1947. And, uh, it, in fact, uh, I just did an interview with Epiphone, and it's on their website. Your new CD, Thank mm-hmm. You Less. Yes. This CD is amazing. It features different musicians, all of yeah. whom are very famous and very accomplished, playing mm-hmm. along with you on some of the songs that people have grown up loving that Les Paul did. What inspired you to come up with a concept like this? Is it, was it from the years playing with Les? Yes, playing with Les all those years and um, meeting all these people and uh, and even before Les, I've met a few of them mm. and became friends. And they said, anytime you want to do any kind of a project or something, we'd be willing to be on it. And uh, and they all loved Les. And all I had to do was just make a call and like call Keith Richards and say, Keith, uh, can you make it into the studio? tomorrow or the next day and he said well no i'll make it next week or something and he showed up and steve miller of course flew in and uh steve miller is les paul's godchild Hmm. and he right away said next next cd you do lou make sure i'm on it so i made sure steve was on it um uh, jose feliciano of course another good friend of mine and he said my song's going to be the best on your cd he said (laughs) <laughs> That's what he told me. And then Billy Gibbons surprised me uh, because ZZ Top, they do three chords, as he always says. That's all we do is three chords, Lou, but I'll, I want to play on your CD. And, boy, he played such a pretty, pretty song, a uh, September song. Yeah. Which, which is an old standard. And he did such a great job on it. Well, Billy Gibbons has has the persona in public that he's like this tough uh, six gun wheeling yeah, rough guy. Yes. What, what, what's Billy Gibbons like in real life? Mm, he's a sweetheart. Really? Like, beautiful person. Beautiful person. He's like the exact opposite of, of exactly. the figure he portrays, right? Yes, he's the exact opposite. You have one of the rascals, Eddie Brigatti, on there. You're right, with, yep, with, that's right. With Bucky Pizzarelli mm-hmm. singing I'm Confessing That I Love You. Right. Bucky Pizzarelli and you, do you guys have history? Do you know each other a very long time? 
Yes, we do. Very, very long time. Of course, when, when I had Bucky come into the studio, uh, Eddie called and said, could I come into the studio and, and watch one of the sessions? And I said, sure. And he came in and he was watching us record. And I said, Eddie, I think you should sing this one. There's a sleeve in the, the, the CD of Thank You Less. The centerfold has a picture of everybody that played on the sessions. And the picture yeah. of Bucky, you have a picture of Eddie Brigatti, Steve Miller, Jose Feliciano, who, by the way, Jose Feliciano, looks like he's 30 years old. <laughs> yes. It's a... Yes, he, he still looks great, and, and he is a sweetheart also. And we do have a DVD out also with, along with the CD. Is the DVD also available from your website? Uh, it's available from the website and on Amazon. And uh, the, the DVD, of course, you can see... Uh, what we did in the studio. You'll see the action in the studio. Yeah, it's www.loupalo, that's L-O-U-P-A-L-L-O dot com. com. Also, we had a girl from American Idol who came in third place singing Over the Rainbow. Melinda Doolittle. Melinda Doolittle. The honor roll continues here. Tommy Doyle, yes. Blondie Chapin. Uh, Noki, Noki Edwards from The Ventures. What a guitarist. And he came in, um, flew him in from Arizona. Went out for dinner that night, and then the next day we went into the studio and recorded two songs in, let's say, an hour and a half. In the studio, are you submissive or are you a leader? Do you try to blend with the way he's playing, or does he follow you? Do you guys run through it a couple of times? Give me an example of what it's like spending time in the studio with Noki Edwards. What, what's it like in the, in the room when you're down to the brass tacks, you're both holding your axes? What's it like? Let's see, with Noki... Uh... We went into the studio, had a uh, little coffee, some donuts, and sat down, put the, got our axes in our hands, and I looked at Noki, and I said, all right, we're going to do Caravan, and he said, fine. He, so he warmed up with something called Out of Nowhere, mm. just to warm up, and the tape was rolling. And incidentally, the recording was done on analog, which is tape. Tape? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's great. It's warm sound, a beautiful sound. So the tape was rolling as we were warming up, and when we finished the song, uh, the engineer said, let's keep it. And that's why we put that right on. And that wasn't even rehearsed. And then we ran down um, Caravan. We did it maybe three times. And then maybe the third, we took the third, maybe the second. I don't know which one we took. But every time was almost perfect because when you're working with pros like Noki Edwards and all these people, it, it's so so easy to work with. So They're so easy to work with. They And, and I'm telling them, what you know? What songs to play? And they said, "Fine." They they never gave me a hard time saying, "No, I don't want to play that song." But they did. Did they ask you what key, or you just looked at no, each other? No. And then, of course, that's another thing too. He played it in a different key that Les played it in. I didn't, it didn't bother me because I'll play in any key. Really? And the bass player I used, Jay Lenhart, on Caravan, it doesn't bother him either. So he he just had any no problem at all. No music. We used no music at all. Just Went right into the song. Amazing. What about Keith, Keith Richards? What was it like? Oh, my buddy Keith. That's my, my, my very, very good friend. Um, Keith was, he, all I said to Keith, Keith, would you mind doing, it's been a long, long time. And uh, he said, no, whatever you want to do. And he came in, and uh, if you notice on that cut, we talk a little bit. Yeah. And we left it on, which is great. And I'll say, okay, Keith, it's your turn to sing. And I put the words in front of him. And he did, and he sang it. He wasn't going to sing, he was just going to play. Right. And I had him sing, and I think he did a great job. Now, when people think of the Rolling Stones and they think of Keith Richards, they think of, like, this party animal. What's Keith Richards like in real life? Oh, uh, he, he is a, a, another, another, just like Billy Gibbons, just a, a beautiful, beautiful person. A great guitarist, too. I mean, he's great. Uh, you, just, you just don't get a chance to hear him. But he could play anything. I mean... Uh, Especially like thing, songs from the '40s and '50s and '60s, he knows them all, and really uh, doesn't really play them on a stage or something like that. But when when we're at the house, at his house up in Connecticut, he goes into songs that uh, are way back, and they're all recorded too. We have 16 CDs we did at the house, hmm. and um, he just uh, he just does a great job and. Uh, he was right there and played it great. I think we did that one in maybe three three cuts we did that song. Did you find hanging out with the musicians like Steve Miller 
slash that these guys they have two personalities even yourself do you have two personalities one when you're performing and then the regular guy personality oh yes you find that with all of them yeah with, with all of them it, 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 what you see uh like if you see keith and uh, so forth on stage uh, he, he might project a different personality but uh, when you're sitting down talking with him he is just like you and i speaking right now to yeah. each other you and Les have worked for many years together, Les mm -hmm. Paul. Yes. You must have had a lot of fun over the years joking around. Oh, yes. A lot of fun. Um, playing in the New Jersey area, Les followed me around for so many years, uh, late 1963 when I first met him. And then he just came to every club I worked in. And then I worked in Oakland, New Jersey, a place called Molly's Fish Market, which is not there anymore. But... Uh, I was there for 12 years, and he stopped in 86 times in the last year I was there. Is this how you met Les? Tell the story. What were you playing on stage the night Les Paul saw you and was interested enough to say, Lou, come on over, I want to meet you? Oh, th that was in uh, Greenwood Lake, New York. I was working in a place called the Brandon P Pavilion in the lounge, and in the back room was Count Basie. Les came in to see Count Basie, and I was working in the lounge, and he was sitting at the bar, and he asked the waitress for me to go over to meet him, and I went over to meet him, and what an honor and a privilege to meet one of my idols. And he gave me his phone number and said, call me, and I called the next day, and I was at his house that same night, and from there on we became friends, and then he just followed me all around New Jersey and uh, New York, wherever I was working, and I guess he was scouting me out because he was retired at that time. And What year was, was this? Uh, 1963. Okay. And then after that, uh, then he started working with me in different clubs, and we went to New York. It started in New York in 1984 at the trio. Scaling Les Paul compared to other contemporaries that you've played with, would you say he's the greatest guitarist in the world? Oh, uh, wow. Or was I, he just he just played like nobody else did? Because the guitar work on High How the How High the, the Moon. High the Moon, yes. A guy can't pick up the guitar and just play that. You can't. No, so no, no. Guy, he he had he had something special that uh, other guitarists didn't have, and that. Uh, when he did the, when he did the mul multiples, which means uh, if people don't understand that, where he played all the parts himself, and his wife sang all the parts herself, and just kept dubbing over and over and over again. That was unbelievable how he did it, and it was like uh, God, I think it was 1950 or around 49, 50, 51, 52, somewhere in there is when How High the Moon came out, and like it was like stereo, and there wasn't mm. stereo wasn't even invented, and like it was great the, the sound he got and and what he played like you said in other words he played things on a guitar that a lot, a lot of gu guitarists don't play yeah i don't understand how somebody could write stuff like that <laughs> i know you can't if you can't it's, sit down and play it how do you write it that's right and you, you have to write so many different parts right a little like you have to practically spend the whole day holding your guitar and you mm -hmm, pick something out mm -hmm. while you're watching tv you pick something Correct. out before you go to bed then you link them all together we're with lou palo uh, his new CD, Thank You, Les, a tribute to Les Paul. During the times that you were with Les Paul, did you guys together ever sit down and write something? Uh, n well, Les, well, just one time Les did something like that, and we did it only on stage. And I can't remember the name of the song. You were like, then, fr you freestyled on stage a lot? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, let's see, yesterday I, was, I did an interview in the U.K., and we were talking about that, that we never rehearsed. We would just go on stage, Les would play something, and just I would just back him up, whatever he's playing, and, and, and just listen to the change. I would just listen to what he's playing and, and put the changes to it right away. Where can our fans see Lou Paulo live, see a musical legend live? Where, are you, uh, where do you perform? Where, do, where, where, where and what are some of your dates that are coming up? Or how about oh, a place, anything local, anything going yes, on with you? Yes, I do have. Well, first, first of all, I'm still in New York where, where Les where we were at the Iridium every Monday night in New York City on 51st and Broadway. And uh, I run the Les Paul Trio, so it's called Les Paul's Trio. And we're there every Monday night, and we have a guest artist every Monday night. Um, I think Joe Walsh is coming up from the Eagles. He'll be the next guest in about two more weeks, I think. And um, <laughs> Yeah, every, every week, let's see, who do we have... Uh, We've had Ted Nugent, we've had uh, Todd Rundgren, uh, whoever they get, we, we run our, we do Les Paul songs up front and then we bring up a guest artist. 
Amazing. That's every Monday night, and on Wednesday nights I'm local. I'm on Route 23, a place called Rupert's, Route 23 North in Riverdale. Oh, yeah, we all know Rupert's very well. Are you going to be there? Tomorrow night. Uh Uh, Your website, lupalo.com. It's called Thank You Less. Watch for the second one because there are a lot of people that that I couldn't get on, you know, like Skunk Baxter, Van Halen, and Journey. Neil Sean from Journey want to be on the next one. (laughs) I'd like to thank you for keeping Les Paul playing all those years when he already had retired. Because of you, we enjoyed four decades of Les Paul. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. And when your next CD comes out, please come on by the radio station and we'll do this again. I definitely will. Thanks, Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Palo, Les Paul Trio. (laughs) 